well. <laughs> Not even brushed my hair yet. Bro, you look amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Welcome to the video guys, keep us a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the video of Cuba and Smeg. I'm actually not training with Cuba today. I, I don't really train with him that often anyway anymore, but um, I'm doing separate sessions again. I'm doing hamstrings and they're doing um, push. We'll get back together tomorrow with pull. Just because um, I've missed my hamstring session from being poorly. So I want to catch up on that because that's obviously the main area really that I need to bring up. So it's important that I don't miss uh, that session. So we're gonna go in with the with the big old RDLs today whilst they hit up push, which is their chest focus session, I believe. Yeah. I'm like that guy. Can you remember that guy? <laughs> Can you remember that guy on YouTube? I'll get him up. I'll get him up. I'll get him up for everybody. So yeah, that is the plan of attack. She'll just get him up to, for everybody. Just about to... <laughs> <laughs> so that is the plan of attack. We're going to have our pre-workout. Cougar's just um, putting the food on the plate for tomorrow, which will go in the fridge so that it's ready to rock and roll. Um, everything in everything else is prepared ready to go to the gym so yeah that that's it we just need to go to the gym same shit different day different day but you won't like it so we continue to do it so hope you enjoy the the eating of food the going to the training the coming home from the training probably talking for a little bit and then head going home same shit on different day. Good everyone. Today we have the follow on, the follow on from last session. Um, obviously, we filmed our was it one of the Elon sessions, wasn't it? Um, so was it what session was it? Was it leg session? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So today we have push again uh, after the deload. Um, I do have a topic to discuss uh, and the type, the kind of uh, catchy little uh, you know clickbait title of this video. We'll give you a little bit of hint on that, uh, but in general, I feel good. Um, definitely have plenty of rest, and I'm very much ready to get after it. But nevertheless, this is the second day of a mini cut, and I will touch a little bit more on that. But first, guys, I do have my little uh, talk sport um, review to watch. Um, Mr. Dave Allen, big up Dave Allen, always been a fan. Uh, talking about AJ music fight, and I have to agree with him. There's no possible way AJ beats that man. The only person that can possibly beat him is Fury, but with the way Fury's looking at minute, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced he's actually gonna, honestly, I can see Usyk beating everyone. I can honestly see that happening. He's got the chin, he's got the durability, he's got the skill. He's just a smaller man than, you, than, than, than Fury is, and that might be actually a problem because Fury's a beast. But, when you actually look at Fiori, and that's not me trying to suggest that it's anyway everything, anything, comment below if you agree with me or not, or not. When you actually look at Fiori, he doesn't look like he did when he was training under Ben. And he doesn't look like the way he did on the second Wilder fight. The second Wilder fight, Fiori were actually bigger and a little bit leaner, I would say. And at the minute, to me, it looks like there's a little bit of partying going on. Just the way he's looking, I can see that. There's training, yes, but on top of that, I think uh, genuinely looks a little bit malnourished. And, uh, you know, I've got some great Colombian coffee beans that I drink pre-workout. I fear Fiori may be having uh, a stronger version of the coffee beans pre-workout push now. So, <laughs> that's, that's my prediction for Tyson Fiori. Uh, I love him though, and I would love to see him kind of conquer everything, but it's that kind of mentality, the old school mentality of boxers, that the new school of boxers do not have. Um, obviously, as you guys have seen, um, a lot of the guys, including Kyle Brook, actually train at our gym. Um, Dominic Ingle, 
the man himself actually brings his boxers down to train at Ultraflex. And when you speak to Dominic, like Dominic is quite is quite well educated. Like he speaks the value and importance of being in good shape and actually having physical strength through some weight training and the mentality of you know the gypsy king is more so that you know lifting weights is going to slow you down it's, it's, it doesn't It'll, it genuinely if you're got in decent shape i'm not saying build muscle but i'm saying get strong don't build muscle but get a little bit stronger i think it would be insane i think he would be going into his fights and knocking people out with a jab i genuinely think that especially with his skill and his ability you know, he's a yeah that's just my two pence on it, but we'll get more into the bodybuilding in a minute. We can have a little bit of a comment below in the section. If you agree with me or if you disagree, uh, let me know. But nevertheless, I'm actually going to have half an espresso because there's a method to my madness. There is. So half an espresso is about 40 milligrams of caffeine. The reason why is because I'm actually going to have a prepare today. I haven't had JP's prepare in how long have I not had pre workouts for now? Since the show? Or since after the show? Since after the show? No, I mean since like right after the show, wasn't it? I've not really had any pre workouts, I've just had coffee, haven't I? I've just about had pump pre workouts, but it doesn't really count as stims. But obviously, it's the second day of dieting, and I will tell you why I'm dieting um, shortly. I fucking failed. But anyway, not under my own, not under my own fault but basically I look like marshmallow man and I shouldn't at this point a lot of Michelin man yeah and I shouldn't at this point out of my control you know you can all guess what's happened basically I've spent 16 weeks half natty um, not under my control but anyway today's prepare so expect fucking fireworks not had a pre-workout in uh, 16 weeks first pre-workout in 16 weeks time it's gonna blow my head off kind of wait. It's probably not been 16 weeks, but you know, I like to exaggerate at times. <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> anyway, down the hatch from a Mrs. Cup. This is, this is actually from R&R. &R. You've all seen Jay, my physio and massage therapist. These are actually cups um, from Jay for his wedding presents. I actually had to miss one because obviously I'm, I'm going to say why, but I'll wait until the video ends. <laughs> why? Why? Go on. Grow some minerals. Grow some minerals. <laughs> if you get dips. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> well. Well. <laughs> you see that little loop? Hanging off my head now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, take it to back and say it later on for that one. <laughs> She'll learn. Come back in kitchen, woman. Audio, need to go gym. I'm ready, I'm waiting for you. You're ready, you're still eating, let's go. I'm not eating. What are you doing then? I'm, I'm doing my order for Sainsbury's. Honestly, I give up. Right, gym time. Gotta get hydrated guys, gotta get hydrated. Welcome to my video. I understand Meg has done an intro. I've done a little bit of talking, but more of an overview, let's get to it. Um, a little bit of an update on current situation. So details are on my log at trainbyjp.com. Um, basically the last 16 weeks has been spent in a, in a health phase, um, a recovery phase, um, not out of my own choice. Um, but on a plus side, um, it's been 16 weeks uh, of me basically getting as healthy as I possibly could. Um, I had my blood work done two weeks ago with Dave Crossland from Eval, um, and they actually came back better than they did um, at seven or eight weeks post show um, in my recovery phase. So I am in the green light. Um, so as you can imagine, it's been a, a long time with no real pushing and no real, um, you know, no real get after it, so to speak. Um, in terms of the gaining phases, as again, it's been a time, it's almost like a crossover time, uh, a bridge time where, you know, we've got everything in order, we've got our health on track and got everything um, in a position to be able to begin um, the next steps. So, 
my timeline with an update i would like to actually show you guys how i plan things um, and my timeline for the next 18 months how many how many months out are we from arnold's next year arnold's. that's if i get accepted for arnold's next year that will be the show that i'm going to be aiming for anyway regardless i actually want to show you guys how i plan timelines for myself and my clients uh, so let's get it up on the mac uh bum 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 whoop i'm checking timeline there we go have you got it right so it actually the phase has actually begun uh well it's officially beginning on 31st of jan uh so that's pretty much where we will basically be starting um, the phase, so to speak, uh, but um, again, it wasn't kind of out of my choice, but regardless, the last 16 weeks, uh, we did focus on getting everything on, on track in terms of health, and that's all on point, and again, with everything that's happening in the bodybuilding world, um, I've definitely been the person to kind of preach a lot of uh, the, safer, the safer side of things, and the better side of things um, that you can take for yourself, so... Basically, the way this is going to be planned is a four-week tidy-up that will begin now, followed by a push-up phase for 20 weeks after that, followed by a maintenance block, um, which will be starting of June 2022, uh, throughout, up until July, and then we'll start another tidy-up phase, and then another push-up phase, before one more maintenance block, before prep begins, uh, March next year uh, which is exciting and I'm definitely looking forward to it um, and it's definitely going to be uh, a time when I'm certainly ready for a prep uh, but in general with how fast time is going like January is almost over um, it's not really long before I do go into prep so I don't have that that long left um, in terms of improvements that I can make so for me uh, prep or off season it doesn't really change right now my full focus is on making as many improvements as i can and in order to be able to do that obviously you need to make sure that you are healthy enough to do so i always preach that and i always do with my clients as everyone knows and i always have done across my channels and my social media um, and i think that's something i'll always continue to do so and that's the kind of flag i always flag um, around uh, our industry i think our industry needs it and i think if i can make a positive impact to anyone I shall do so. Uh, so that's my goals right now. Not only to you know bring some great content for you guys, but also try and have a positive impact on as many people as I possibly can through helping you, educating you, and showing you my process um, as we get stuck in. Um, so I basically like to plan my off season in stages. Um, whether you know I actually stick to that or not is a different story because. I like to have a base plan set in front of me then I know exactly what my goals are, I know exactly what my expectations are and what my timeline is that I'm working around uh, and that is something I do like to do with my clients as well because when you've got all these targets set, you've got a clear vision of where you are heading for the next 12 to 18 months and I think that's something that's so important. It's something that's so important when you've got big goals, big aspirations uh, but again, when you do map this out, you know, you still have to focus on a daily process and daily grind that will inevitably drive you towards your goals. So as much as I like to plan this out, at the same time, you have to appreciate what it is that will inevitably lead towards you achieving what you've set out to achieve. And in my opinion, it's simply getting after it. It's simply doing the do on a day-to-day -day basis and being the best version of yourself uh, that you can be at that time um, and you know and just keep grinding it through keep getting after it and keep building yourself up uh, towards that one day at a time I like to always say that uh, especially in prep I think people get caught up on these dates a lot and they lose the vision and they lose the actual sight of what will bring them to the best possible physique come stage time and that is just focus on your day to day tasks um, and, and you know what I hate I hate I hate how much it actually speeds up your time because looking at my last prep it's actually a conversation i had with a few of my friends um the prep literally flew by because i wasn't even focusing on the date in mind 
I was more so focusing on just the day-to-day -day grind and day-to-day -day, um, battle and just being better on a daily basis. And I think I've, ha I've, I've carried on with that kind of mentality uh, throughout this off season and time is really flying. Like it's 16 weeks gone already uh, since the show. Um, and officially we have got uh, 85 weeks left until the next show. That's exactly how long we've got left, uh, which is pretty mental. Uh, but that is pretty much my timeline set. That is what I have got planned uh, for the next steps, next stages of my uh, process. So the process will continue up until uh, the prep starts. And then when prep does start, we'll probably do a road, road to Arnold's again, road to Arnold's 2.0. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really excited for it. I really am. Um, and this year, I'm not going to try just, you know, prepping 20 odd people for a show and prepping myself at the same time. I'm going to get help this year. Uh, I'm not just going to prep myself. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have my Luke. I'm going to well, hopefully, I'm going to have Luke in my corner in my corner throughout the process to make sure I don't make any errors. Uh, which, again, I didn't really make that many errors, apart from probably pushing a little bit too hard uh, when I didn't need to at a couple of stages uh, throughout my prep, which probably resulted in me looking less, um, probably less, uh, less popular than I probably could have done. So that's pretty much uh, a bit of a reflection. But anyway, that is a little bit of an update of where we're at right now uh, before we actually get stuck into the session. So I hope you enjoy that, guys, and uh, we'll chat a little bit more after you've watched me train. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Every single set you have to treat as preparation. So these sets are meant to be the least effort possible, but just enough work to be able to get you prepared for what's about to happen. So for me, I treat them all like I would have set, but you don't obviously take it all the way there. So initially, I like to do more reps. Then as I get heavier and heavier, I'll work in doubles and triples to get my top maximum weight. So right now, I'll touch this for a double, and then I'll probably do a single with five and a half, and then that will be my working set. So this way, I'm getting to my top working set. I'm preparing myself, but without expanding any unnecessary energy. Let's go. One rep if I need it. One rep if I need it. Can be done. Let's go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's fucking go then. Let's go. Drive. More. Take it. Take it. Take it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. Lovely. Ho ho. For all the haters. <laughs> For all the haters. <laughs> 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 
kind of makes me cringe when people say they've got haters or it makes me cringe even more once they've got fans my fans Whoa. like something dies inside me a little bit I mean like people like Phil Heath like top 10 Olympia like yeah fair enough you've got fans but you know Steve from down the local country club doesn't have fans only fans he has is one of them electric fans okay. <laughs> here we fucking go had dips last but we was using the prime machine and it, the load on it isn't that that heavy so I was doing stack for like 14 reps and it started to become a challenge to actually stay in it so I thought a natural progression from that is dips so I decided to do that today uh, which is a for me it's a great movement I connect with it very well I can stay very safe in it as well just through control and change of direction which what I mean by that is when you descend, when you come down on the eccentric push of the rep, you don't speed it up and bounce out of the hole. 
that way is a sure way to get a tear um, and I think that is the main cause for many people tearing the shit is not controlling that change of direction and actually speeding the reps up here so naturally when you think about it it's, it's, it's simple physics when you've got a certain load here if you let it speed up from there to there it's going to get heavier so you overload the muscle where it's the weakest um, so it's not really a good idea is it let's face it <laughs> Well, when it's not the weakest, when it's most vulnerable, which is in the stretch, um, which is a, a, a bad idea in my opinion. So, something to try and avoid doing. Uh, and I often actually reset my pressing when I notice that my change of direction speeds up through just naturally trying to push heavier and you know get carried away. I often reset my lifts just to rein it back in and get it back on track. Biceps, biceps, work, work, work. I'm not doing it for you. Come on, work and work. More, more, more. There, just work. Fucking hell. Yeah, 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 No, no, just okay. the
So, because I'm actually going into a mini cut, uh, I would like to show people and maybe share with some of you um, how to set up a mini cut. So, for me, it's simple changes. Because we are going into a mini cut, it, again, we want to be in and out, so the changes are somewhat more aggressive. So, generally, um, before I would start a prep, I would make a gentle pull in calories around three to four hundred calories. Um, and that would inevitably put me in a nice deficit initially uh, and I would bump up my expenditure slightly. So my preference when actually going to a mini cut is reducing calories by around 600 on both training day and rest day. Um, also implementation of a little bit of extra expenditure. So my steps have been generally ranging on average around 8,000 steps per day. Um, which is, you know, not high, but, you know, not the lowest either. Um, I like to keep fit somewhat and stay a little bit more active. So right now, my daily steps will be no less than 10,000 per day. 
and then I will continuously assess. So the rate of loss that I am looking for in a mini call for your reference point is around four pounds per week. Generally in a prep, yes, initially I would want to see a larger rate of loss and then on an average, I would like to see a pound and a half to two pounds per week. Um, in a mini cut, again, we don't really want to waste time. Um, at this point now, since the show, I know I haven't really built any new muscle, so I'm not going to lose any new muscle tissue. That's just not going to happen because I haven't really built any yet. I know some of you may be thinking, oh my God, he's wasting all this time. No, I haven't because I'm really healthy, I'm strong, I'm fit, and I'm ready to go. So I haven't wasted time. I have almost pre-prepped myself ready for these next steps. So going back to mini court, obviously it ranges a lot and it varies a lot as to how you approach it versus you want to prep. In a prep, you want to make smaller changes over a longer period of time because you have a larger time frame to work from. In a mini court, it's a short time frame that you want to execute in and you do want to be in and out of it. And, and again, people are scared of like losing muscle, losing strength. Um, I think the loss of strength in general, apart from push session, is gonna be more so mental rather than physical. So if you mentally lose that battle, you will get weaker. It's inevitable because you're gonna go in that approach in the gym and be like, right, I'm, I'm gonna be weaker today. You, you won't be. Like for example, today, the last time I hit uh, my push session that I, I hit today, I was actually three pounds, uh, four pounds lighter, four pounds heavier, sorry. And I've managed to actually match my reps and in, in, in some actually progress on my first movement. So necessarily you will not get weaker. Um, you will if you allow yourself to mentally as well. Um, so the plan is to basically get down to around 250. Uh, so my plan is to take off at least um, 20 pounds, which again, I started at 270. Um, so I'm down three pounds already in a few days in which again, initial drop is just water, inflammation and gut weight. Um, initially, I do expect around four to five pounds of inflammation and water to actually drop before I actually start tapping into body fat. So another thing you've got to be mindful of guys, um, this is why initially you always drop a larger amount of body weight to begin with, because it's not just body fat, you actually drop, it's a lot of fluids too. Uh, so one consideration to make. So. The plan and the vision for this mini cut, the, the time and expectation is a minimum of four weeks. Uh, my goal is to get down to around 250, um, get lean, get strong, and uh, not lose any muscle tissue. That's pretty much in a nutshell the goal. I know it sounds easy when I say it, but it is a little bit harder, and there's a couple of caveats to this uh, in reality. So the biggest thing that we'll have to watch for is, again, my training volume, which will not increase, my training volume will, will remain the same. And right now, the main thing is to basically stay fresh, keep on top of the sleep and recovery modalities, which I always do, um, and just simply execute this like a prep. Uh, so I will say this, guys, there's no point executing a cut if you're not gonna commit to it like a prep. Uh, depending on what your goals are, again, if you're just a lifestyle client, then you can give yourself a little more freedom. If you are an athlete like myself, uh, wanting to compete, you know, at the highest levels, um, there is no real room for balance. You know, I won't be eating off plan. I'm gonna basically treat this like a a mini prep, a mini comp prep, um, and that's pretty much the goal. If I need longer than four weeks for me to be in a position that I know I can stay in a surplus for 21 weeks after that, then I, I will I will do it longer. But I'm hoping that it will only need four weeks of pushing. But again, any questions you guys have regarding mini cuts and how to set them up, comment below and I will give you a hand. Um, but initially for me, it was a, a simple drop uh, of 600 calories, both on training day and rest day, and addition of extra 2,000 steps daily, uh, which inevitably will put me in quite a large deficit, as it already has, uh, as I am three pounds down since I actually started, uh, 3.4 pounds down in three days already. So we are already under uh, weight, we're already kind of getting ahead. And I'm excited to actually get this done because the vision is set, the plans are set. As you saw earlier on my timeline, um, there is no real room for error and there isn't really that long left before we are back into prep. So we've got to make most of our time set and we've got to get after it. And I'm here to show you the process and take you all on a ride with me. 
so hopefully you've got some good information from this call, from this actual call, from this video. I'm actually thinking about um, my client call tomorrow morning, uh, which I will be actually covering mini cuts and I think there's another subject that one of my clients suggested. Um, but I do hope you enjoy this, guys. And I am excited to show you the process and bring you more content as well, both for myself and Meg. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share with a friend. And peace.